Hello and welcome to your speaking and listening session 10. We are at the end of the module, which is uh, looking at interjection and redirection of a discussion um, and using appropriate language and register. So in other words, we're able to jump in if we need to. We're able to move the discussion on to a different area. Uh, we're able to use the appropriate language and we're able to use the correct pace and tone to do so. You'll see on here, you've got your lesson plan, your PowerPoint, uh, and some additional um, resources and reading to do and your book to help you come to terms with this. Uh, now, let's move into the PowerPoint itself, which I quite like the title for this one, Adapt or Die, Master an Audience um, and Propose in Any situation so let's have a look at this you should be <clears throat> sorry you should be able to adapt to a range of situations so whether you're doing formal presentations and formal presentations you should be able to adapt uh, you should be able to understand your audience we covered that in the last session we should be telling our message again we covered that in the last session Understanding different types of audiences, um, understanding your purpose, adapting to those different situations, staying flexible. Again, we covered that in the last session. Effective communication, actors listening, nonverbal, adapting to different cultures and cultural awareness. We'll then move over to avoiding stereotypes, dealing with conflicts, conflicts resolution, problem solving, uh, creativity, time management, prioritization, adapting to change, resilience continuous learning and conclusions. So quite a lot to cover in this session. So let's start off by uh, the first slide here. We need to adapt to a range of situations. So in today's fast paced world, it's important to be able to adapt to a range of different situations. Whether you're dealing with a difficult client and a uh, negative or complex project, or simply trying to communicate effectively with your team. Adapting is essential. Adapting to different uh, situations requires flexibility, creativity and a willing to learn. It means being able um, to think on your feet, take risks and try new approaches. It also means being able to communicate effectively with people from different backgrounds and cultures and to understand their perspectives and needs. So understanding your audience is a crucial step to effective communication. By knowing who you are, uh, who you're speaking to, you can tailor your message to their needs and interests, making it more engaging and relevant. So we spoke about that in the previous slides, in the previous module, session nine. There are many tips for understanding your audience, which we did cover in, in session nine, and that's all about knowing where they're from, their demographics, their values, their beliefs, and anticipating potential objections to what it is you're trying to say. You'll need to tailor your message to your audience, and that's crucial for effective communication. So when crafting your message, consider who your audience is. So speaking and listening is no different to um, making a poster or a flyer or an advert. The way in which you would want to sell an item to somebody's age or demographics is exactly the same to apply to the speaking and listening. So putting that creativity head on, understanding your message, who you're tailoring it to, will allow you to be more creative uh, when tailoring that message. So one way to effectively tell your message is to use language that your audience relates to. For example, if you're speaking to a group of professionals, use industry language. Uh, but if it's not, avoid jargon. Another way to tell your message is to use examples and stories. And we spoke about that in session eight as well, where we talked about stories and metaphors. This can help your message be more memorable and impactful. Remember, there are different types of audiences. And again, we've covered this. We won't cover this too much. But when it comes to public speaking, it's important to know your audience. Um, knowing that a different audience can encounter uh, a unique set of circumstances, understand their needs and expectations. For example, if you're speaking to a group of professionals, 
you'll want to use industry language as we just spoke about and on the other hand if you're speaking to general audience you can avoid that you've got to focus on the big picture another important factor to consider is the demographics of your audience so how old they are whether they're male or female do they come with specific cultural backgrounds and again all of these will help you to adapt what it is you're trying to say to the audience so understand your purpose so this is crucial to adapt into different situations it helps you to identify what you want to achieve and how you're going to get there so when you know your purpose you can align your actions with your goals and make the decisions that you need and, and you can lean in towards that to understand your purpose start by asking yourself questions like what's my motivations for me what are my values uh, what do I want to achieve and reflect upon your answers and this will create you a personal mission this statement will guide you in making the decisions that aligns to your purpose adapting to those different situations is crucial both for personal and professional life it allows us to respond effectively to uh, unexpected challenges and opportunities and to navigate that complex social environment with ease. One way to improve your ability to adapt is to uh, cultivate a growth mindset. This means embracing challenges and opportunities for learning and growth and being more open to new experiences. Uh, another important skill is the ability to read social cues, adjust your behaviour accordingly, um, when you're interacting with your colleagues or friends. Remember, we spoke about emotional intelligence earlier, so staying flexible is also crucial in today's fast-paced world, especially a, a world that's constantly changing. So being able to adapt to new situations and challenges is essential for personal and professional growth. It allows you to remain open-minded, learn from your experiences and develop new skills. One way to stay flexible is by embracing uncertainty, leading in um, and, feature, um, and fearing into the unknown. Try to view it as an opportunity for growth and learning. Avoid, uh, sorry, another tip is to be willing to take risks, step outside your comfort zone. This can help you build resilience and become more adaptable to change. Effective communication is essential in both personal and professional relationships. It allows us to express ourselves clearly and understand others better. Good communication skills can help us build trust, resolve conflicts and promote teamwork. To improve your communication skills, start by actively listening to others. Pay attention to their body language, their tone and their voice. Try to remember their perspective before responding. Also be clear and concise when expressing yours. Use simple language and avoid jargon and technical terms. We've already spoken about active listening throughout this whole speaking and listening. But just as a final recap, uh, active listening is a crucial skill involved in a situation where communication is involved. It involves fully focus on the speaker, understanding their message and responding thoughtfully. Active listening can help you build stronger relationships and avoid misunderstandings and improve problem solving skills. To improve your active listening skills, it's important to eliminate distractions and give the speaker your full attention. Make eye contact, nod, and provide others with non-verbal cues showing that you're engaged. Ask questions to clarify what you've heard and repeat back what you've heard to ensure the understanding of the speaker's message. So Shannon and Weaver, sender and receiver. Uh, we've already spoken about non-verbal communication. Uh, it's just as important as verbal communication. It conveys the message effectively. And in fact, studies show that 93% of communication is non-verbal. This includes body language, facial expressions, voice tone, and even the way you dress. To improve your non-verbal communication skills, start by paying attention to your own body language. Make sure you're standing or sitting up straight. Maintain good eye contact and appropriate gestures to emphasise those points. It also ensures uh, it's all. It's also important to be aware of cultural differences in nonverbal communication, um, as what is accepted in one culture may not in another. 
So adapting to different cultures, we spoke about this in session eight and nine. So in today's globalised world, it's becoming increasingly important to be able to adapt to different cultures. Whether you're working with international clients or collaborating with colleagues from a diverse background, understanding cultural differences can make all the difference. One tip by adapting differences to culture is to do your research. Learn from their customs and traditions in their culture um, you'll be inter interacting with and try to understand it from their perspective. Another tip is to be open-minded and flexible. Be willing to, to step outside your comfort zone and try new things. By sharing respect for others, cultures and the ability to be adaptable, you can build stronger relationships to achieve your goals. Again, the same for cultural awareness. It's crucial in today's globalised world to allow us to understand and anticipate the differences between these cultures, which can help us build stronger relationships and misunderstandings. One way to improve your cultural awareness is to learn about different cultural perspectives and customs. For example, you could read a book or watch a documentary about different cultures and attend cultural events and festivals within your community. Another important aspect to cultural awareness is being able to uh, be aware of your own biases and assumptions and making every effort to challenge them. Furthermore, by doing so, you need to avoid stereotyping. So stereotyping can be harmful and limiting both to ourselves and to others. By assuming that someone fits into a certain category based on their appearance, backgrounds or other factors, we may miss out on getting to know an individual. It's important to recognise your own biasnesses and work to overcome them in order to build more inclusive and diverse communities. One way to avoid stereotyping is to focus on individuals' characteristics rather than a group label. Instead of assuming that someone has certain uh, country with a certain job, has a particular personality trait, take time to get to know that person. Additionally, it's important to be aware of the media we consume and how much um, can be harmful stereotyping. By actively speaking out diverse perspectives and challenging our assumptions, we can become more open-minded uh, and empathetic individuals. We've spoken about dealing with conflict. Uh, dealing with conflict is a natural part of life. It's important to be able to deal with this effectively. When conflict arises, it's easy to become emotional and reactive. By taking a step back, approaching to the situation calmly can help us find a resolution. One effective way to deal with conflict is to actively listen to the other person's perspective and try to understand their point of view. This can help build empathy and create a more collaborative environment. It's also important to communicate clearly and assertively without aggressiveness or defensiveness by expressing your needs and concerns in a respectful manner. You can work towards finding mutual benefit situations. So conflict resolution strategies looks at one effective conflict resolution strategy is active listening. This involves giving the other person your full attention, trying to understand their perspective by doing so and identifying the root cause. Remember, we talked about root cause, seven whys, why, 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 why. Um, and this can help to work towards a solution that satisfies both parties. Another strategy is compromise. This involves finding the middle ground for both parties can agree on a solution. It may involve giving up something or in order to reach a mutual benefit to overcome. Problem solving skills. So problem solving skills are an essential part of personal development settings. Uh, this allows individuals to identify, analyse them and, uh, and come up with effective solutions. Whether you're facing a complex problem at work or trying to resolve conflicts with a friend. Having a strong personal problem solving skills can help navigate the situation successfully. To improve your problem solving skills, it's important to first understand the problems at hand. Take time to gather the information, identify that root cause of the issue and brainstorm potential solutions. It's also helpful to break down the problem into smaller, more manageable parts. This can make it easy to tackle the information and increase your chance of finding a successful solution. Additionally, don't be afraid to seek out advice or collaborate with others to find solutions that works best for everyone involved. So creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation are vital for success in today's rapidly changing world. They allow us to think outside the box, come up with new ideas and solve problems in a unique way. 
To improve your creative and innovation, think about trying to approach problems from a different angle, brainstorm ideas without judgment, and seek inspiration from a variety of sources. Don't be afraid to take risks, try new things, as failure can often lead to valuable lessons and insights learned. Thinking about time management, effective time management is crucial for the success of both personal and professional life. It helps us to prioritise tasks, meet deadlines and achieve our goals. To improve your time management skills, start by setting clear goals, breaking down them into smaller manageable tasks, using tools like calendars and to-do lists to keep track of your tasks and schedules. Avoid procrastination and distractions by staying focused on your goals. Prioritisation is key for all success in both personal and professional life. It involves identifying the most important tasks and allocating time and resources accordingly. One tip for improving your personalisation skills is to create a to-do list and rank them based on the importance of urgencies. Another tip is to delegate tasks that can be done by others, freeing up time for your more higher priority tasks. Adapting to change and change management is, is, is inevitable and can be difficult to navigate. However, being able to adapt to change is crucial in both personal and professional settings. It allows us and individuals to remain flexible, open-minded and to achieve new situations with confidence rather than fear. To adapt to change, it's important to first acknowledge and accept the changes is happening. It's also helpful to stay informed and up-to-date on development related to changes. Additionally, maintaining a positive attitude and seeking support from others can make the process of adapting so much smoother. Thinking about resilience, we talked about resilience throughout this whole, whole presentation as well. Resilience is a quality, it's an essential quality, sorry, for everyone who wants to succeed in life. It's the ability to bounce back from setbacks and keep moving forward no matter what challenges we may face. To improve your resilience, it's important to focus on building a mental and emotional strength. This can be done through practices like mindfulness, meditation, regular exercise, positive self-talk. By cultivating a strong sense of inner resilience, you'll be better equipped to handle whatever is thrown at you. Furthermore, we talked about continual learning. It's essential for personal and professional growth to allow us up to date with the latest trends and technology within our industry and help us develop new skills and knowledge. One way to improve learning skills is to set goals for yourself and give you a clear direction and focus to help you stay motivated. Another tip is to find a mentor or a coach who can provide guidance and support you through learning and growing. So in conclusion, Adapting to a range of situations is crucial for success in both personal and professional settings. By understanding your audience and the purpose, tailoring your messages and staying flexible can actively communicate and navigate difficult cultures, uh, sorry, and navigate difficult cultures and conflicts. Additionally, problem solving skills, creativity, innovation, time management, prioritizing, resilience, and continual learning are all important components for the ability to adapt to change and to succeed in a variety of situations. So when we think about 2.10, we're looking at interjecting and redirecting discussions using appropriate language and register. So therefore, guidance for interrupting politely um, looking at options and sharing ideas. So on here then, uh, you can see we've given you some guidance on interrupting in conversations in English. So a good reason to interrupt somebody is to ask for clarification, to agree with the person, to show an interest or enthusiasm. You can interrupt to, mean that, to mention that, a reminder that something similar that you've talked about earlier. When you finish your comment or question, you can be extra polite by exercising or apologising for the interruption. Um, and there's some examples listed below. So the reality is, if you are listening to something or somebody and you're not understanding it or you feel that you need to interrupt, there's obviously ways in which you can do that uh, and you can just follow this um, to go through. So, redirecting discussion 
if you have to redirect a discussion, so for example, you are managing conflict, you're in a situation where the discussion isn't going well, or if you think about session nine, you're going around in circles and you're not, you know, it's not working, then to redirect that discussion may be an option. So to redirect a discussion, you may say to somebody, you know, oh, that's a really interesting point. However, could we talk about this? Or I really enjoyed what we've just discussed there. I've got a particular interest in this. So you can be polite when redirecting discussion. Uh, and obviously, using the appropriate language and register throughout. So ensuring that you remain polite, professional, um, and uh, you're using the correct pace and tone. So you're waiting for the right time to interject. Good. So all we're going to do now is um, we've got one more session and this session will look at session 10B, which is all about the speaking and listening assessment. So we're going to consolidate everything that we've learned. We'll have a quick recap and then we will look at the mock exam. Brilliant. Well done for getting this far. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the consolidation and recap session. Take care. Bye for now, everyone.